Okay, so this is the third installment. This next lecture, we kind of mainly just introduced nutrition and macromolecules in general. Um, and this slide is just kind of that introduction to show that we're gonna kind of showcase how we take large molecules, break them down into simple building blocks, use some of them for energy, and use a lot of them, pretty much all of them for cellular components and how to build cells essentially. So we keep coming back to this 10 universal features of cells. Um, this is always just going to be a good resource. This is a building block for anything biology, pre-health related, anything like that. I'm never going to ask you to memorize all 10 of these and write them down. We had to in grad school. It was kind of a pain. What I would want you to know is understand why each of these are inherent universal features. And if I ever ask you, hey, what are at least two or three universal features of cells, know the ones that you are best at knowing and give me those so that I can see that you have at least a small understanding of the idea of what like a cell is and what we're trying to interconnect. So this slide is basically just to show that we eat large macromolecules, they get broken down, we use some of those for energy, we use some of those for building blocks for cells. Cells without those building blocks start to die. That's malnutrition versus starvation is loss of energy. This graphic is really helpful. This breaks that entire thing down. It's kind of the beginning of that table that I had you fill out where, you know, it talks about here's all these, you know, essentially four macromolecules, nucleic acids being probably the most, the biggest micronutrient that you need to know alongside vitamins and minerals, but that you get these large chains of macromolecules and our body breaks them into the simple, simple units and then we reincorporate them as the body needs. And that's essentially it. They're just using as those building blocks. Some of these building blocks, specifically carbs, as we'll see in this one, are used a lot for energy. So this was just a kind of a story of why we need to eat so much, essentially. We had some good questions about like why, you know, why it was a good investment to eat so much and maintain like a high calorie diet to kind of keep ourselves warm. And because we are warm blooded and we exist at that 37 degrees Celsius, it's just really good because we essentially can maintain ourselves in a lot of different environments. Cold blooded things need to rely on the environment. We don't. This was just a good slide to show you, okay, for what a cell is made of, it's made of a whole lot of proteins. Sorry, right here. Make sure I get this little thing out. We're made of a whole lot of proteins. We're made out of some polysaccharides, and remember these are carbs. We're made out of quite a bit of nucleotides, and then a small amount of phospholipids, which is mainly going to be that border around this whole thing. So remember the phospholipids are going to form that plasma membrane. This is basically just a, this is a quick intro to show that once we, our body can break down those subunits, we turn them into macromolecules in a connected way that we want them to be. And then once these large molecules are together, we can actually form large super molecules. See, this is protein number one. There's protein number two of a ribosome, for example. So this was also an intro to how we're going to look at amino acids, remember? So amino acids come in this chain. They form a protein as they are translated. You know, some have positive charges, some have negative, some like water, some don't. This is just that intro to show you we have a lot of different combinations that you can make. Right here is just a, a a good slide showing, okay, we have these kind of chains forming of these amino acids. We have chains forming of these simple units. We can add a simple unit by just using an enzyme right here, as we'll, you know, we kind of discussed in that last class. You can add simple units one by one by one and essentially form these long chains. Oops. In the opposite effect, you can actually break this bond right here. Whoa, I don't know what that was. You can break bonds as well and break off little simple units as well. So that concept is just there to show you you can break bonds, you can form bonds. Just a second. Okay, so that simplified cartoon, this is actually what we're building, these proteins, these groups. 
So I know we're still in proteins, but they're probably the most important, like we've said um, before. But it's one of the biggest things is to kind of understand the similarities between the macromolecules. And one of the biggest similarities is that small units can form large units, whether that's carbs or proteins. But right here, we can see certain spots where the amino and the carboxyl group are going to form up and bind. I'm not going to ask you to draw any of these chemicals, anything like that. I probably won't even ask you to like describe anything like in great detail. Just know that specific bonds can make chains of simple mon monomers, which are those little single units, into huge chains of polymers. So onto the intro for carbs. As far as structure, it's one of their, you know, it's one of the first things that's different. It can exist as a linear form. It can exist as a ring. We recognize the ring as probably the biggest source of energy in our body. What you can do is form, so once, so remember the ring is the simple unit, it's the monomer. You can form polymers from monomers by binding them. And in this case, this is a glycosidic bond. So if you had to have differentiating characteristics between this and proteins, proteins form peptide bonds, sugars form glycosidic bonds, for example. Again, though, I'm not gonna ask you to you know, tell me the differences in chemistry between, you know, a four, a one to four bond or a one to two bond. That's for biochemistry and that's much later. Just know that I want you to know simple units can form longer chains into large units because that's right where we go when we take a look at starch or glycogen. These are all little simple units and you can see them right here and they all link up. Now we know that starch and glycogen are actually formed to as energy storage and in a lot of cases they can be structural but for the most part this is just a really good way for creatures to store energy because ultimately we want these little monomers to pop off one by one by one when we get into like glycolysis and harvesting energy from them but for now it's really beneficial to store them in these long chains so carbohydrates can do that this was just to show you that even just the smallest changes can have a huge impact on what can be digested. So for example, because of the location of this OH group, our enzymes can't utilize these carbs, for example, these cellulose carbs. We can only do so with starch. So that's just mainly a good example to help remember things by. This slide is another thing where it's just good to see, okay, here's those simple units, one by one by one, they form together. This is how an organism can form structurally from carbohydrates, not just for energy. And then last but not least, some carbohydrates come complete with this massive group right here, this gigantic um, chitin structure right here. And when you form long chains of chitin, they form like this big hard exoskeleton. So carbohydrates, again, very useful as pure structure molecules and energy, that was what we've seen. Sometimes, and you can see little monomers right here and here, you can build little small chains of what we call oligosaccharides. So that's just a few of those carbs linked up together. And you can actually link up enough and in a certain pattern that they can become kind of thumbprints for certain proteins. So this is a glycoprotein. It's, you know, a cell membrane one. So it's sticking outside the cell and cells can recognize each other by what saccharides or what's like complex carbohydrate structures are right here. So it's good, again, for carbs, another defining structure is that it is kind of a fingerprint for cells. This was just here for your health, like basically just showing that those simple monomers of glucose, they get immediately digested. Fructose from fruit is going to take a few more steps, and thus that's why it's a little healthier. And then sucrose from coffee, things like that, or pop, it causes all that energy response, but there's no sugar, so all that machinery kind of just shows up and doesn't really do anything. And that, that actually is almost as unhealthy as massive amounts of glucose, unfortunately, we found.